Today, we're going to use multisim to investigate frequency response. This is an important characteristic of systems such as filters, tune circuits, amplifiers, and the like. Typically, the frequency response of a circuit shows the magnitude and phase of one or more of its node voltages as the input frequency is varied. A combination of a magnitude graph with a corresponding phase graph is known as a Bode plot, and this is usually plotted in decibels. To start, we'll create a simple lag network consisting of a 1000 ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor. We will also need an AC voltage generator. The simulation will set the generator's frequencies, so we will not need to make any changes to the settings in this example. To see the node numbers, make sure that Show All Net Names is selected in the Options Sheet Properties menu. Before we perform the simulation, let's consider what we expect. This circuit should be critical at 1.59 kHz. At this frequency, the output will be reduced to half power or a 3 decibel decrease. The phase shift will be negative 45 degrees. As the frequency increases, the output level will continue to drop and the phase shift will approach negative 90 degrees. To generate the Bode plot, go to the Simulate menu and select AC Sweep. A settings window will open. Select the Frequency Parameters tab. We'll use 10 Hz to 1 MHz. We can also set the number of plot points. The larger the number, the greater the accuracy, although this will increase the computation time. We'll use 20 points. We'll also set the vertical scale to decibels. In the Output tab, select the capacitor voltage. Select Run. The Output Graphing window opens. At the top is the voltage magnitude plot. The vertical axis is in decibels relative to the input source voltage. The horizontal axis uses the logarithmic scale. This should be obvious from the pattern of the vertical grid lines. It is important to stress that this plot is not telling you the absolute voltage level, but rather the voltage relative to the input source. We can see that at low frequencies, there is virtually no signal loss. Remember, zero decibels is unity in ordinary form indicating that the output and generator levels are the same. As the frequency increases, the output magnitude decreases, as expected. The bottom graph is the phase plot. It begins at 0 degrees and reaches negative 90 degrees at very high frequencies. We can determine specific amplitudes, phase shifts, and slopes through the use of the measurement cursors. First, click on the upper curve. Now select the Measurement Cursors button. Two cursors appear at the extreme left, and a small readout window opens. We can move the measurement cursor by grabbing it with the mouse. If we move it to approximately 1.59 kHz, we see that the level is down 3 decibels, as expected. We can determine the attenuation slope by also using the other measurement cursor. 
move the new cursor to 100 kilohertz. The amplitude will be approximately negative 36 decibels. Now move the original cursor to 10 kilohertz. The amplitude will be about negative 16 decibels. A frequency range of 10 to 1 is a decade. In this span, the signal decreases 20 decibels. Therefore, the attenuation slope is 20 decibels per decade. You can also perform measurements on the phase plot. First, deselect the cursors button to remove them from the amplitude plot. Click on the lower phase curve and select the cursors button. The cursors appear on the phase plot. If we move a cursor to 1.59 kHz, we see the expected shift of negative 45 degrees. The graphing window may be customized in a variety of ways. Double-clicking on the plot will allow you to change the curve color, title, font, axis number format, scale type, plot range, and more. For example, we can set the lower limit to 100 Hz and the upper limit to 100 kHz to zoom in. Finally, diagrams can be saved, recalled, and printed via the file menu. And with that, we conclude our quick tour of multi-SIMS frequency domain simulation and plotting capabilities. Thanks for watching.